It's Ely here for Status Quo. I'm here with the esteemed Dr. Cornell West. Um, it's an honor. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, the honor is mine. I salute you, my dear brother. Younger generation holding up the bloodstained banner so you can put a smile on Martin and Malcolm and Ella and Fannie Lou Hamer's face, man. Mm. Don't don't forget Ida. Ida B. No, 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 Wells, Barnett to too. We got Ida. You right. You right there. <laughs> you right there. <laughs> I would not be a journalist if it wasn't for Ida. I would not. Um, She's one of the greatest of the great, though, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to kind of, since I have such a great black leftist mind here with me, um, I wanted to kind of counter the argument of the black vote being centrist because it's problematic from a number of angles, right? Like the number one angle being. The black vote is not a monolith, number one. Even though they ain't invited to the cookout and we don't talk to them, it's still black Republicans and they exist. You know what I mean? That's, the, that's still our brothers and sisters and we still acknowledge them. And they exist and they deserve respect. And at the same time, all of, you talk about Martin, you talk about Malcolm, you talk about W.B. Du Bois, you talk about Fannie Lou Hamer, you talk about uh, all of them. All of them, all of them. And then 70% of the Black Panthers were women as well, and they were leftists. Like all of these group, all of these folks were leftists, socialists, um, some of them even communists. Uh, think about W.E.B. Du Bois, he had Angela to be a communist. Angela Davis. Well, one of the first thing to keep in mind is that uh, we got a large group of precious black people who don't vote at all. Mm. So you can't overlook them just because they decide not to participate. They just reached the conclusion that the system itself is so rigged and rotten that the politicians are going to say anything in order to win, but most of them tied to big money and big military, and most of them just can't wait to see their careers flourish as opposed to the people themselves being empowered. So you got a large number of black folk who just pull back mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. Then you got the black folk who are registered but then might not decide to vote. Then you got the black folk who are registered and vote. Mm. So you already got a smaller group. Yeah. And of that smaller group, you're right. You got conservatives, you got liberals, you got leftists, you got communists, you got anarchists. We, we've always had a variety and diversity in our ideology. But right now, because the black leadership is for the most part neoliberal. Black elected leadership in America is neoliberal in the sense that most of them are very much tied to big money, big military. Just look who, who they vote for. Mm -hmm. They vote for military increases. Mm -hmm. Trump just increased the military $750 billion. Yep. How many black politicians voted for? A whole lot of them did, the vast majority did. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Same is true when it comes to Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Same is true when it comes to our black organizations. Most of them are tied to telecommunications, and banks that provide the money for their organization. So they can't be critical of the banks. Mm -hmm. So somebody like Bernie Sanders comes along and says, I'm going to indict Wall Street greed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to indict pharmaceutical companies greed, insurance companies greed. I'm going to indict greed of corporate elites. Many of our neoliberal black politicians say, well, I understand what you're saying, but you're going too far. You're dealing with something that's impractical. So what did they say four years ago? Medicare for all was impractical. Now they're running $15 an hour living wage. That's impractical. That was a socialist agenda mm -hmm. just six years ago in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Now they run into $15. We can go on. Free tuition. Institutions of higher learning that are public. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that's impractical. Now they're beginning to run. Mm -hmm. So you can see how it's the movement from below, the Occupy movement, Black Lives Matter movement, Me Too movement, ecological movement that's bringing pressure to bear on these politicians. And they're starting now to respond. But see, Brother Bernie, he's not perfect, but we got to be critical of everybody. Mm -hmm. But he's already been there because he stands for the dignity of those slash don't call everyday people. Now, the black tradition, when it comes to the best of who we are as a black people, mm. we can go all the way back to Harriet Tubman and, 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 and Ida B. Wells. We can go all the way back to A. Philip Randolph. We can all go all the way back to Hubert Harrison. We can go back to Manny Marable. We can go back to Angela Davis. They already raising the class question. Mm -hmm. And probably, the, you know, one of the greatest black intellectuals of our day, Adolph Reed Jr., 
he been raising the issue of class and the centrality of class, so you can't talk about white supremacy if you don't talk about predatory capitalism, either in its industrial form or in its more financialized form, which we're dealing with today, so that we have to be able to make this connection between how vicious forms of white supremacy that all of us are concerned about. Mm -hmm. It rooted in, shaped by capitalism. And see, that's where the neoliberals don't want to make that move. They want to just talk about race, 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 race. Understandably, we love black people too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the focus ought to be on the black people who are catching the most hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We love all black people. Yeah. But when it comes to black poor people, black working people. Yeah. You it see? is just, it, it very much, it reminds me of like some of the hollowness of some of the, these movements to get certain black people in power. And it's like, we need to support our black women who get in power. Yes, I'm with you. Let's support them. But what about the black women that work at McDonald's that's catching all type of hell from d these managers that are sexually harassing them, from these wages that they're dealing with, from the, all of these various systems, systems of oppression, and let alone the, the black trans women that they out here killing every day and then we don't even talk about it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we, we don't... Precious trans folk. Probably the most vulnerable mm -hmm. among all of us, among all of us is our precious trans folk. But I think part of the issue is, you know, how do we talk about vicious legacies of white supremacy mm -hmm. grounded in the history of capitalism going back to chattel slavery, going back to neo-slavery, which is what Jim Crow was, mm -hmm. and forms of neo-slavery still operating in our mass incarceration regime. You see, and then recognize how central patriarchy has been. So you end up with black leadership that is disproportionately male mm -hmm. and therefore overlooking not just the precious black women, but the vast majority of black women who themselves are poor and working class. Mm -hmm. So if you really focus on the plight of black women, you're going to raise some class issues you, you because can't my help grandmama it. went to second grade. Yeah. She's not just a beautiful black woman, mm -hmm. but she's a beautiful black woman who didn't get the, the quality education, uh -huh. who had to wrestle with a life of poverty, and therefore the issue of class becomes crucial. Uh -huh. And in the end, one last question, though, brother, and when it comes to militarism, this is what Brother Martin understood late well, in his on, career, and Malcolm Dr. understood Dr. it early. Oh, just hold on just a second, because yeah. before you transition, yeah. I, I just I feel it in my spirit right now that I need to kind of talk about this. Um, sure. We talk about supporting black women. I'm going to be a little personal right now. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about my grandmother who's passed or my dad who um, who d had to deal with the legacy of it. But I can talk about my issue. And, and I just found out a few months ago, seven, eight, nine months ago, that I am a descendant of a rape. My grandmother was a house worker and my her boss she she take care of the kids, you know, domestic workers. She'd clean up the house, take care of the kids, etc. And my dad was born out of a rape in that case. And we talk about supporting black women like this is and my dad's not that old. He's only 50 some 60 almost 60 years old. You know what I mean? So we're we're living in a legacy in an era where the legacy of the damage done to black women at the lower classes has is just like we can see it it's palpable it's around us and we do and, and if we're going to support black women then i'm gonna need y'all to not just worry about the women at the top and making sure we sure th these things are important we need representation there but like you said the folks that are catching the most hail and like there are people that are dealing with these issues on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you're going to talk about you stand up for black women, I'm going to need every one of y'all right now to stand up for these poor and working black women. Period. No, you're absolutely right, though, brother. And it, 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 it's fundamentally an issue of morality. And as a revolutionary Christian, for me, it's, it's an issue of spirituality. It has to do with looking at the world through the lens of those friends for known called the wretched of the earth and that their children are as precious as any other children in any class any race any gender any sexual orientation and and this sense of acknowledging just the preciousness of poor people and working people
Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statusquo.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statusquo.com/join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.